Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being with us at Salesforce Sessions. I'm Brian DeFroda, your host for today's session. And with me is going to be Drew Brennan. Drew Brennan is a seasoned marketer who has decades plus of experience in the Salesforce ecosystem and helping companies uh, get through their digital transformation journey. What I love about this conversation with Drew is that we hit a couple different things. In addition to understanding Drew's own personal journey into email marketing, we understand kind of what faces CMOs as they try to tackle this whole big thorny digital transformation thing. We talk about email and email as a driver of engagement and engagement driving the bottom line. And when you're tackling digital transformation, implementing email, all the things that have to come into place to make it um, a successful uh, implementation and a, and a successful project for you and your company. Good afternoon. My name is Brian DeFroda, and I am your host for this uh, today's episode of Salesforce Sessions. I have with me uh, Drew Brennan. Drew is a new senior account executive at Listengage, and uh, I'm excited that we're going to hear from Drew today and learn about his journey, how he got here, and kind of some of his thinking about the market. So, Drew, welcome, and thank you so much for, for being on the program with me. Yeah, excellent, Brian. It's uh, it's good to be here with you, and uh, looking forward to it. Looking cool forward to the conversation. It's going to be good. So, you yeah. know, one of the things that I think is so interesting, you know, that I love sales and I love the process of sales. I kind of geek out on sales, and um, so when I talk to a guy like you, you're a seasoned salesman, right? It's been your career. You've been in it for a while. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit? How'd you get here? Yeah, it's been a it's been a it's been a pretty long ride. I have been in sales for quite a long time. You know, I, I actually started um, in the beverage industry uh, here locally in Indianapolis. I live here in Indy. Uh, grew up in Indianapolis. Live in Carmel, Indiana. If you're familiar, just north of the city, and mm -hmm. uh, started at, at a beverage comp company. So learned the beverage industry uh, right out of college, and um, you know you know, that type of sales was really customer service oriented, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, your customers had the right, right SKUs lined up in their stores and, and, uh, it was going into the stores every single day and doing merchandising work and learned a lot about, um, you know, customer relationships and, and, uh, service, uh, which was, uh, which has been integral in my career, I think, as I've, I've expanded, but started in the beverage industry, um, uh, got hired on at Exact Target in 2013, actually, and um, was a part of a group, um, a great group of people. I'm still connected to a lot of those folks, and uh, a lot of them are mentors. Even. So, so, so let me interrupt you for one second. For, for those people who are watching and don't know, um, we know Exact Target, right? Because we live it and breathe it every day. But what is Exact Target, and how does that connect to Salesforce? Yeah, I mean, you know, Exact Target really created the marketing club, right? It was the acquisition Salesforce made to get into the B2C space in 2013. And, um, you know, I started there in, in January of that year um, as kind of an account manager, and I managed uh, the customer relationships uh, uh -huh. for the Exact Target customers. And um, so to answer your question, yeah, when, when Salesforce decided that they wanted to be more in that consumer space, that was the entry point into that uh, back in 2013. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, so that was 2014 you started at Exact Target or 2013? That was 2013. 2013. So it's now 2021. So you've been, you've been kind of immersed in this whole email marketing thing for, you know, seven, almost eight years now. Um, what, what do you think about it? Well, you know, email marketing is still the conversion king. It's still the digital channel of, of choice for most marketers because you can track it. Uh -huh. You know, people can make purchases over email and it's, it's just a great way for consumers to, um, um, you know, execute on those, on, on conversions. Uh -huh. There's lots of other channels now, right. But, but email is still kind of that mechanism. So what I love about the space is that 
um, you know, you can really be creative with how you interact with that, that customer across the customer life cycle, you know, and I remember when I started at, at exact target, we talked about it the exact same way eight years ago, you know, yeah. from, from acquisition through retention and everything in between. Um, and <clears throat> what's really neat about kind of our space is that, um, there's so many different types of use cases. There's different industries that we work with that, um, you know, they're all, they're all looking to do certain types of things to help, you know, either increase revenue or, you know, decrease other uh, costs. Maybe it's the efficiencies within their, their, their department that they want to help optimize, right. Or it's uh -huh. uh, risk. And so, there's just some really cool things that you can do, um, you know, with email and cross-channel marketing in general that uh, I've always loved, right? And I've, I've really, I think at this point in my career, I, I've been able to learn a lot from some really great people um, at yeah. Exact Target and at Salesforce and now here at List Engage uh, to really have some fun conversations with, you know, our customers and mm -hmm. Salesforce's customers as well. You know, our, yeah. our customers. You know, the thing that I think about, right? Uh, since I've been now in the ecosystem, um, and that's the Salesforce ecosystem for, for the past three uh, years or so, uh, before that, I you know was a heavy Salesforce user in my, my different companies and businesses. But I looking at the tools available now, I think about how mu it would have made my life as a seller so much easier had we like used them 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or had those tools available. Sure. Um, do you ever think about that? Like how, how these tools would have like just made your life so much easier. Well, it'd make my customers' lives a lot easier, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm not the marketer, you know, but I help the marketer find those solutions that are going to make the most sense for them. And that's what, right. that's what I feel like I'm really good at is lining up those solutions, but yes, to, totally. And, you know, Salesforce has made a lot of acquisitions since 2013 to really kind of build out their, their solution, mm -hmm. right? terms of thinking about that in customer in mind and, um, you know, what types of tools marketers can utilize to ensure that uh, the messaging is on, on point and they're optimizing that, that customer life cycle, that journey. Yeah. And that's well, when you get some really fun things when you have those conversations and it just becomes organic and natural, you know? So, so, so this kind of brings me uh, to a point that uh, you and I discuss often um, and you know, it's, you know, a, a topic I like to constantly come back to, but I like to always remember the fundamental reason we use email in the first place. Why start email, right? Why use email? And the whole reason is to, um, engage your customers. Right. And, um, I, there is a, a statistic out there, uh, from a, a report and I'm trying to pull it up, but you know, it was something to the effect, um, I think it was done by Constellation Research or maybe it was Hall and Partners. I know it's Constellation Research and, and here's the thing. It said that engaged customers increase cross-sell activities by 22%, drive up sell 13 to 51% and increase order size five to 85%. That's why we do email. Can you respond to that a little bit? I mean, those are num those are empirical numbers, right? Those tell us the story of of the power of email, right? I mean, I think about it like this. I think about it with my individual use of email, right? My personal Gmail account, right? It's a direct link to me in my preferences and mm -hmm. companies that I interact with or have done business with in the past. I want them to reach out to me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want to hear about their new promotion or you know, when I can get a good deal on the next sale, you know? And so, so for my personal experience, I look, really look at email as, as being, you know, it's my inbox, right? It's the, one of the first things I kind of look at every single day. And as a marketer, um, it's really important to send out, you know, timely information so that they know who I am and can communicate to me in a personalized way. So when you, when you describe those numbers, that's not a surprise to me because mm -hmm. I'm not the only person in the world that thinks like that. Um, and, you know, it's interesting to me. I'm always waiting for that next channel, you know, and, and socials really interesting one, but it's, it's sometimes it's hard to tie back ROI and, and, and emails has always been that linchpin to ROI. That's right. Channels. Yeah. I think Altoff shake calls email the, the best uh, last mile execution, or, or actually I should say that he refers to marketing cloud in the way it 
enables you to use emails, the last mile execution for the marketer to connect to the customer. Yeah, it's a great way to think about it, right? Because you do a lot of the things up front that could be content or social and, and, and advertising is top of funnel, but you know, email does kind of complete the, the journey. So the, let me ask you a, a slightly more fun question. So we all get a lot of emails. We all subscribe to things, whether we like it or not, um, when we go to do an online purchase, and then we start getting those emails. So we, we are the recipients of the of the tool and the channel that we we promote. So do you see emails from stores or, or vendors that you purchase from and get the email and think, oh, God, I wish they would have done something different, or they just really missed the boat. Does that ever happen to you? Sure. All the time. Do you, do you have a favorite example? I'm a critique. I'm a critique. Um, you know, I'm the guy that, that clicks the unsubscribe link in my emails to see what service they're using. You know? <laughs> if it's an exact target, you know, unsubscribe page or if it's custom and if they've got a custom page, it means they really care about email. Yeah. You know, um, is there a good one that comes to mind? I mean, we've all had the emails that say dear value customer, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, it feels like a one size fits all campaign. Yeah. I think of the brand differently after I receive an email from them. You know, yeah. I can't think of a specific one and I don't really want to call out anybody, but those are things that, you know, in 2021 with the tools that are available to marketers, they shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> they should be personalizing their content. Absolutely. Um, it, sounds, it sounds, you know, maybe not, not stupid, but it, it, it sounds like it might not be that big of a deal at the, at the end of the day. But, you know, brand perception in 2021 going further is, is so important. Um, you know, I, I heard a lot of great things when I started that, you know, even within your industry, you're not just competing against mindshare of your competitors. You're thinking about mindshare of other industries, right? Uh -huh. in that inbox. And it's all a personalized, relevant experience that every consumer is on a is on a journey with with those brands. You know, is the way I think about it. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. my the the thing that I find so compelling when I receive emails. Um, so, so first of all, I'm a big fan of uh, Charles Tirrett. They're a, a yeah. men's uh, a clothing uh, vendor, and fan, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, it's an English brand. Uh, like the cut, it's good stuff. But yeah. I tell you what, they are on their email game because I go to the website. I maybe I got an email because I saw something. I click. I look at, at it. Sure enough, you know, some period of time later, it's a hey, did you forget anything or you want to see this again? A little more time. How about a coupon to help you uh, in that decision making process? Would an extra ten percent off or some free shipping help you? help you, uh, you know, make a decision. And you know what, more often than not, it helps, uh, it helps me make a decision. You're a savvy consumer. That's that right. Area. So, so I, I, I like it. it I, I feel like they're engaged. And I, I was uh, talking to my wife uh, the other day because um, we were online trying to buy something and then we've got kids, right. And kids just oh. you know, blow everything up. And oh. so eight hours later, we come back to, to it trying to find the site, can't find the, the item again. Of course, our shopping cart's not there. It like, it literally took me an hour to try to find the thing that we were going to try to buy. And then we just ended up giving up because we couldn't easily get back to it. Lost conversion. That's you right. Know, have your information. And I, I'm the same way, you know, kids make life, makes life busy, right? And you need companies to keep that in front of you at all times. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, so, so the thing is we're obvious enthusiasts, right? We think it's cool. We like doing stuff with it, but I have to imagine that if I was uh, a head of marketing or a CMO, um, and I wanted to help my company on their path of digital transformation, there's so much to take in. Like the Mar stack, the, the MarTech stack is so complex. There's so many things out there. I, I don't even know how to start. How do you, yeah. you know, when you start talking to a customer, how do you even, you know, help guide their, their thinking in their, 
you know, their discussion. It starts with the customer. I mean, I always have said it starts with the end customer, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and how they want to communicate with that end customer. Yeah. Right? And point solutions are great. Like right? they work, they're fine, but they're not connected to each other. You know, right. so if you really need a, a coordinated uh, campaign, maybe it's only two channels. You utilize a, a, a larger solution that does have multi-channel capabilities, but um, it really depends on how they want to interact with that consumer. At the end yeah. So I always start there. And then, you know, at scale, you always talk about at scale. Okay. So you're going to do this with the customer. This is your customer journey from, you know, acquisition through retention, mm -hmm. you know, and, and understand that. Uh, but then how do you optimize it and how do you, um, how do you do analytics behind it? How do you tie, you know, data back to, you know, where there might be gaps in your communication strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really want to understand that first. And then also it's, you know, for the marketer, for that CMO or the director of marketing, you know, um, you know, what their goals are, you know, for not only for the campaign, but yeah. for the career. Right. You know, what, what's, what's the goal of the marketing department this year um, and how can we help them, you know, achieve their goals and make them a champion of the solution. Um, you know, you always need a champion. And, and, and I think that's when you get to, that's what I love about this, this work is that it really becomes collaborative. You know, whether I'm working at Salesforce, I'm working here at List Engage it becomes collaborative and just natural to all work towards that common goal. And when you mm -hmm. can kind of get to that, that's when it becomes a powerful, um, you know, partnership really, you know, working with the customer and, um, you know, helping them achieve their goals so that maybe their goals to get promoted to CMO. Right. That's right. And we're going to help them. We want to help, we want to help them on their journey do, to do that. Mm -hmm. By the way, they're going to see some ROI during that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm I'm shocked though that when you start talking about ROI, a lot of people, um, some people know what that is and know what it means for their business. Some people don't. Um, how, when, when you encounter a customer that doesn't or hasn't really thought through ROI, what, what what's what's the process for helping connect it? Right, because ROI is partially how they're justifying. The purchase, the reason they buy Salesforce, the reason why they need a partner to help them uh, implement Salesforce. H how do you help them understand ROI? Well, if if, if they don't understand ROI, the first thing they're first thing they're going to probably say is, "We just need more conversions." Mm -hmm. That's just the tip. That's just one piece of ROI, right? Yep. That's increasing revenue. That's great. But what if you're actually straining your resources to get that 10% lift in conversions? Well, then mm -hmm. you might be flat on like a bottom line or an ROI. Right. So, so how can we help increase revenue? Number one, how can we uh, mitigate risks of the brand? That's another big thing, right? Like we can't be sending people email when they unsubscribe. Yep. We got to make sure we 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 don't want to get a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. um, and then how do we optimize the efficiencies of the organization, right? So yep. automating some campaigns. So I think we have to, you have to, if they're, if they're thinking about it in terms of just increasing conversions, it's more than that, right? It's the brand brand risk mm -hmm. it's also helping make efficiencies within their organization to, to uh, create better efficiencies. And so that um, it's not manual, it's more automated and you just let the system do its work. And that's the beauty of Salesforce when you do it the right way is that you can automate yeah. everything really, you know? So that's kind of like marketing bliss, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and that's also kind of the nice thing about going through the, the mental process of implementing a CRM, implementing marketing cloud. Um, it causes you to think through your process and think through your impacts. And, you know, as you, as you do that, that allows you to really understand ROI and, and, and know what you want. And then what, when you know what you want, then you can call on us. Um, and uh, for those that don't know, we have a great strategy practice and that digital marketing strategy that we do. I, I mean, our best clients are the clients where we can really sit down after an implementation, have those discussions about what their goals are and really optimize the, the software to, 
to hit those goals and then to keep iterating, you know, to t talk to that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, when you make a decision to move to Salesforce, that's a big decision, right? You're building mm -hmm. your campaigns and your, your marketing execution on the Salesforce platform. It's a great, great decision, obviously, because you're, you're building on a platform that innovates all the time. Right. So yeah. you're into that and you're buying into a community and, and there's so much more to it than just buying the software. But um, I think, you know, the implementation, that's something that we're, you know, we've been doing for 18 years. Right. That's right. We've been doing them a long time and, and, and we've done a lot of them really yep. well. Um, but to, to extend that, you're exactly right, is, is how what's the plan, you know, post go live, you know, and how. Um, there's always a plan, right? Mm -hmm. but, but, but to, to, to facilitate that plan over the course of time, right? It, a lot of times you want to have, you know, a, a, a partner that like a list engage that's been, you know, you know, working in the platform for, for a long time that can help, you know, with best practices and, uh, just industry best practices, vertical best practices, what have you, um, to help keep it going you know, yeah. keep the, keep the ROI train going. And I think you also, you need to have those ROI metrics identified once you go live, uh -huh. right? So you put a stake in the ground that says, this is where we are. And this is where we, you know, this is where I need to be, you know, for my boss. Uh -huh. And I report back at the end of the year, you know? So um, does that answer your question? Yeah. 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 It definitely does. I think that, you know, oftentimes, you know, I've heard um, different team members talk about the fact that, you know, we've gone in there, sometimes customers thought they should be measuring this and instead they need to measure that. And, you know, we've helped them kind of refine what they were measuring. And then once we had an ROI, then, then you know, and we knew how that metric, where that, what drove that metric, then we could really start tweaking the software. I love this kind of, comparison oftentimes a marketing cloud gets compared to to a ferrari and the thing is most customers in my opinion i mean they get plenty of benefit from using you know the first tier of capability of marketing cloud right they get tremendous benefit they, they could get the return on investment but what i've always found fascinating are those customers and usually some of your larger enterprise customers or your more innovative brands that really want to push the limit of what the system can do. And, and that, that I think is kind of a, an amazing thing about marketing cloud, you know, yeah. cause we can get yeah. in there and do that. It's data, you know, it's the, it's a, it's data and it's integration. And when you have the data, marketing can do a lot of amazing things, right? That's right. You need to have the data integrated and, um, that's why it's an ever, it's an evolving piece, Brian. It doesn't, you don't just implement it in that one journey. You're just not one and done. Hey, we, so. we did it. <laughs> we implemented yeah. marketing cloud. So we're, we're, we're free. No, it's not. It's, it's, it has to be an iterative path and you have to be, um, you know, open to exploring the ecosystem yep. right? and what Salesforce has to offer. And, um, you know, I think that's where we kind of help guide them. You know, we can help guide. What, what do you mean? Connect the dots for me. How does that work? Well, I would just say, you know, you might be a marketer that comes to Salesforce that, you know, came from MailChimp, you know, and you're a good email marketer, right? You've got good best practices and you want to help, you want to automate more. Mm -hmm. So you're going to come and you also want to be a little more multi-channel and you might incorporate SMS, for example, with the email channel into your, your campaigns and, and do a couple journeys right? Mm -hmm. That's perfect. It's a great stepping stone. And that's a crawl approach to jumping into Salesforce. It's a little different, right? But then as you get that down, there should be a kind of next step, you know, what are you going to do from a channel execution strategy, you know, maybe incorporating advertising into that, 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 that conversation, or is, is it the web personalization, right? What's the most impact the company is going to have and, you know, leveraging the Salesforce team, you know, is one thing and, and the community um, and all the events that Salesforce comes comes with that you can learn so much about, you know, uh -huh. channel marketing, marketing in general, but then, you know, working with us to help kind of, like I said, facilitate, right. And understand as a partner, you know, you know, where or not, where an investment might, 
make the most sense or um, execution of a campaign might, might make the most sense. Just, you know, having that partner that's been doing it for so long that has the technical specs and the, the strategic specs to be able to help, you know, on that path. Yeah. Because I think it can be daunting sometimes, like, where do I start? You know, what yeah. do I do? I don't, you know, and that's, I think that's where we really help, you know, our customers. It, it, it definitely, I find it daunting. The other thing that I find daunting yeah. Is that okay? So I'm I'm careening down this path of digital transformation. And did you hear about that that McKinsey survey, by the way? Uh, which 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 one? So in October, McKinsey came out with this study, and they basically um, said that COVID and the pandemic have had this huge impact on yeah. digital transformation. Sure. And and it was like a staggering number, like it accelerated the plans for digital transformation by like six years or something. Yeah. Which is just like, wow, that's a lot of change. Just, just think about the number of decisions you have to make in order to pick things and then process you have to go through to implement. It's just, it's, yeah. it's mind blowing. And so if you're on the marketing side of that and you've got to enter and you've got to figure this out, you've got to, you know, your CEOs kind of beating up, you know, top down telling you like, Hey, we, we have to engage more with these customers that we can't see every day, go figure out how to make it happen. I mean, that marketer has got a heck of a problem on their hands. That's a lot to sort through. That's a loaded statement, <laughs> you know, go figure it out. You've got to figure this out. Yeah. I mean, that's, there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. Right. In COVID, yeah, I mean, I think it accelerated people's digital transformation and, you know, you have to be more competitive now. I mean, this has been going on for the past 10 years, really, you know, mm -hmm. something next year, there's things that happen within industries that change the complexion. I, I always look at, I look at what companies are doing, right? Mm -hmm. I think about the customer, um, at the end of the day, the customer experience. Yep. I mean, there's a couple companies that have, and we know who they are, you know, it's no surprise that have a wonderful customer experience and they, they have, they, they, they just create that. And, um, and we all had those. And so yeah. I think COVID's one thing, of course, right. It's, it's created the need to do it. And I think um, it's just going to keep growing, but, but I always think about who's winning the customer experience game, you know, in, the, in any industry and you could almost go down financial services it's this company it's this company it's you know and, and that's what's pretty interesting to me is like is like how how people are making it better for consumers mm -hmm. to partner with brands and do you know you know uh make purchases and um you know you know make it easier for them in their lives we're busy dads we have families like we want customer companies that make it easy for us to do things right? yeah. and make decisions and move on with our lives. So if I'm yeah. the head of marketing, right. And I've got all this digital transformation stuff to do. Yep. I don't know where to start. What's your message to me? How do I get started? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, I really would, would sit down. I would look at, I would look at the whole picture with them. If that's what they want to do, you know, we want to understand what are the objectives of the company, right? Well, how are you thinking about um, lining up your, you, your priorities to the, the current objectives of the company and whether that's coming from, you know, a public company where, you know, they want to do X, Y, and Z over the next one year, or it's a FinTech startup. You always need to make sure you're aligned to the board and, what the corporate objectives are, right? And then I would just break it down by, you know, what are the business strategies, um, you know, and just kind of understanding how you can align marketing to everything the company's doing. And so I think it's a bigger conversation than just marketing, customer journey, like for you to get buy-in yep. the rest of the organization, you gotta be aligned there. Um, and then you can build out your campaigns from there. Right. And then you build your metrics and so do I have to do everything at once? I, I, I would never advise on that, Brian. I would say to you, you know, um, when you get into sophisticated behavioral marketing, you really want to be crawl, walk, run. You want to, 
adapt some quick wins, things that, that we can help you implement, you know, in the next couple of weeks, get that yeah. thing done and then move into some more transformational stuff that's multi-channel and, um, you so know, really I, digging into your data. Yeah. I just thought of a new term. We're going to call it agile marketing implementation. So everyone likes to talk about agile project management. The whole yeah. the whole concept is fail faster, right? Break things up into small one week or two week increments, try it out and then iterate. And I think that that's what I love about crawl, walk, run, because yeah. when we think about what needs to be done with marketing, it takes a long time to get alignment. It takes a long time to understand what everyone else is doing and then what you can do to support. And then to really execute, it's all about breaking off something that you can do, execute, nail it, iterate on it. And then if it works, keep doing it and doing it more, right? Yeah. That's the beauty of marketing analytics is that it's all about iteration and you have to turn the dial up or down mm -hmm. based on what you're learning from it. Yeah. And that's really like that with any business process, right? Like you dial it up or you dial it back and you need to have those analytics behind it. And that's why we always, you know, when we work with our customers and we talk about the data layer, yeah, getting that right so that you can do everything that we're talking about now, right? And the data layer is part of the implementation and then it's, you know, it's iterative after that. Agile, I like that. <laughs> Devils in the details and the details in the data. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, so then this kind of brings me to another thing, right? Which was a comment you made earlier. You said, Hey, um, you don't just implement and are done, right? Like our customers aren't static. So, so we can't be static either. No, we really can't be static. I, I think, you know, the way that I like to, we've got a great project team, yep. really great resources here that have done a lot of implementations. Right. And I'm the conduit for my customers to get to those technical resources that have all of that great knowledge of the platform and, you know, worked in a lot of different industries. So what I would tell you, I think what's working good for me right now is just being connected to my stakeholders that, you know, have skin in the game to just get an outside voice of how projects are going, where are we at with our metrics? How are we tracking towards, you know, you know, implementing this quick win that we discussed, right? Like just being that um, kind of third voice and then, you know, having a quarterly business review to understand, um, are we meeting that? Are we mm -hmm. following back a little bit? How can we dial that up a little bit and, and kind of recalibrating or being agile, like you just said, with, um, with, with, with those business conversations, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah. you, you talk about being a conduit for the resource. I have a report right here and, yeah. um, That's my report right there, fresh off the presses. So, uh, crazy fact, yeah. um, 65,000 people worldwide are certified in Salesforce. Right. Of those 65,000, 3,500 have marketing cloud certifications. Right. Um, Crazy. It's unreal. It's not a lot of people. It's not a lot of people. I mean, I, I would tell you, I, and I've been in the ecosystem long enough to know this, right? Is that it's, a, it's an amazing platform. It's a great platform, right? But you need, you need people that know what they're doing with it and, and, mm -hmm. and people learn it. And it shouldn't be this thing where it's like, oh gosh, Salesforce, like that's, I'm not trying to get to that. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that um, there's opportunities for, for people really in the ecosystem to be certified because lots of companies need resources like that. But we're, we're also a company that provides that, right? Mm -hmm. We provide that guidance for them. And so um, what we've done so well for so long in terms of, you know, implementations, it's, it's ongoing campaign management too, you know, and, being a partner, um, you know, helping them execute, um, again, against all these business, you know, ROI results that we're discussing right now. So when you talk about this ongoing support, what, what would we do for ongoing support? Yeah. I mean, I, I just think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's essentially, um, it's really all of it. It could be all of it. It could be, you know, helping them formulate the, the strategy, right. Or the go-to-market strategy of how we're going to do this.
Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a strategy component to it. Um, You know, helping build those campaigns, identifying those quick wins, being agile, like you said earlier, that I'm going to start using that one. It's a good one. Um, So it's, it's the strategy part, but then it's also, it's also campaign execution Uh and design, you know, it's the design of the emails. Um, are they pretty looking emails? Do they look good for that consumer? Is it going to be relevant? Do they render on my phone? Right. Customer experience. Yep. It's gotta be good. It's gotta be on point. Um, again, you're competing against everybody else. Even if you're a, you know, financial services customer, you're, you're competing against that CPG brand that has 20 email designers in house, you know? Yeah. And you might not have any. So, so we're, we can supplement and help help co- companies um, in any of those areas, really, in regards to design, campaign execution, strategy, um, you know, really the full gamut. So. so so, I'll create a scenario. You respond yes or no. Yeah. So I've got a full team, Drew. I've got email designers. I've got solutions architects. Can you guys still help me on an ongoing basis? And how would you do it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we would we can we can augment, um, or maybe think outside the box of what the company's not focused on, right? And give you kind of a, a different lens to um, whether that be a best practice, just by us being in the the platform so much, or just being a second set of eyes. Nice. So, um, yeah. Well, but Drew, I've got a fancy strategy guy that's on on loan to us from some big six consulting firm. Um, cool. But, you know, and, and I've got some email designers. Can you guys still help me? And what would you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in that, that situation, you know, just having a technical resource that understands the data and the system, right? And, and has been working in Marketing Cloud can, can help make those, those strategies, those big ideas come to life within the platform. So I would say like a technical, technical person that you probably need that's certified on Marketing Cloud would be helpful there. So, and, and Drew, finally, um, you know, I've got a, a, a team, uh, but someone, you know, leaves, someone gets sick, somebody goes on leave for some reason, and I need flex support. Can you guys help me? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course, Brian, we can, you know, help in any way like that, which would be, you know, a monthly retainer potentially, or, or, you know, hopefully it's a good, it's a good, uh, leave plan where it's three months or six months or something. And it, it, it could be a six month plan where we just come in and help execute on those camp- campaigns and transition for that person once they're, when they're out like that. Yeah. Nice. And, and if I want to end up hiring my own staff, we, we help train and transition to the, to the new team. I think so. I think we would help, you know, not, not only augment that resource, but then, you know, make a smooth transition to the team that they bring on board uh, later for sure. Yeah. All right. That's a, that sounds pretty good. And to me, yeah. when I think about that, you know, I go back to those statistics and it's hard to hire good marketing cloud people. Um, it's easier to find your, your, your email people. Uh, but still, you know, yeah. that they, they, they don't grow on trees. So, so, so there's a lot to it. And I think ultimately at the end of the day, when, when, a marketer is trying to figure out digital transformation. They're figuring out what to do, what to implement. I think they've got a couple things that they've got to really understand. Just to summarize what you said, they've got to understand the strategy. They've got to make sure that the products that they're selecting are in line to help achieve that strategy. They have to know how they're going to use them. They've got to be implemented in such a way that they'll achieve the goal. And then they've got to keep that ongoing system up running and iterating to to meet with the changes of the market 100 percent, right and and i think while you were just describing that i could see a marketer think oh that might be there's there's a lot of pieces moving parts there yeah however you know the material impact of that happening for a company is astronomical Right. I mean, it really can be. That's why the ROI is so important. Right. Right. But ROI is not just selling widgets and getting your conversion rate up 3%. It's all the efficiencies within the company that they're gaining. That's right. Um, you know, it's, you know, 
there weren't any lawsuits this year because we executed the right way, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. I mean, I, maybe that's a bad example, but just mitigating the brand risk, right, is another thing. So um, there's so many different things. And that, that's why I think when you asked earlier, like, what would you do? I, I would look at the top down. Like, what does the board say? What is corporate objectives? Like, mm-hmm. what does your boss say? How am I, how are we going to help you get promoted, you know, to, to the CMO? Or whatever. That's right. Yeah. So. Good All stuff. right. Well, well, Drew, we've uh, we've been kind of iterating ourselves here for a while. I wanted to thank you for being on the program with us today. Uh, everybody, this is Drew Brennan. When you're considering your digital transformation journey, please consider him at uh, dbrennan at listengage.com. He's happy to help, and uh, look forward to. Um, talking with everyone a bit more. Awesome. Thanks, Drew. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate that.